Tracy Point. Let's take a look at this short-lived pleasure resort tonight on Project Algerine. In the late 1800s, the city of Erie's Bayfront was a dirty, smelly, hazardous industrial zone. It wasn't the type of place you wanted to spend much time. There were no roads going out on the peninsula at the time. Pleasure resorts popped up on the outskirts of the city, to cater to those wanting a relaxing day at the beach. Like most local resorts at the time, they were only accessible by boat so the citizens of Erie would line up at the public steamboat landing to catch a ride. Tracy Point, as it was called by the locals, was once a very popular destination. This little piece of land at the end of the bay sat just east of the Massasauga Resort. Around the same time that the Massasauga Resort was getting started, a man by the name of Jake Gabe opened a restaurant at the location known as Tracy Point. The Lone Fisherman's Inn became a well-known establishment to the locals. The building had large windows that could open, serving as an open-air banquet hall with excellent views. Gabe cleared out the grounds around the building and planted new gardens and shrubbery. The Lone Fisherman's Inn began hosting corporate picnics and large social functions. It became the place to be. The restaurant being situated right next to another popular pleasure resort only helped to increase business. That is, until one night, in January of 1892, the Lone Fisherman's Inn burned down. Daniel Tracy, who inherited the property from his father, a wealthy railroad man, decides he wants to build a hotel, in the same location as the old restaurant. Much of the neck of the peninsula didn't exist at the time, this would provide the hotel guests with excellent views from their hotel rooms, of Lake Erie. A road was constructed through an old ravine, and the next summer, the hotel at Tracy Point, opened for business. On the evening of September 2, 1898, a local newspaper reporter checks into the hotel and is seated in the northeast balcony. Around that same time, Mrs. Paradine was escorting a group of children, including three of her own, for a relaxing day at the beach. Leaving the Massasauga beach and making their way over to the dock, the group decides to take a schooner to take them to the foot of State Street. As the schooner pulls away from the dock, the news reporter over at the Tracy Point Hotel hears the laughter from the rowdy group of young beachgoers who have chosen to sit on the front of the boat. The reporter said he could hear Mrs. Paradine scold some of the children, instructing them to stay seated. When the schooner was just about to pass by the hotel, a sudden gust of wind filled the sails. This caused the boom arm to swing over, knocking all eight children off the boat and into the water. The fact that some of the children didn't know how to swim, and the weight of the thick heavy clothing in those days, was an instant recipe for disaster. The children began to thrash around and yell, gasping for air in between short spells of submersion. Mrs. Paradine, who is still on the schooner, begins screaming hysterically. The newspaper reporter hurries out of the hotel and begins running towards the dock. By this time two hotel employees have already secured a small rowboat and are attempting rescue. Meanwhile, the schooner captain finally gets his boat turned around, but doesn't go back to pick the children up. Instead, he docks the boat at the Tracy Point Pier and lets Mrs. Paradine off, who had been screaming at him the entire time.
By now, the hotel employees in the rowboat, had reached the area with the children. The boys were stronger swimmers and were able to tread water longer than the girls, whose heavy dresses weighed them down. Everything happened so fast, that many hotel guests could do nothing, but watch the horror unfold. When the rescue was over, all the boys had successfully been saved. However, all the girls, perished that night. The father of the girls had been notified of the tragedy, and refused to give up. He searched all night. Early the following morning, the bodies of all four girls were successfully retrieved. At the funeral, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. For several years, the hotel was leased by the Summerheim organization. It was used primarily as a social club for German families that had immigrated to Erie. Summerheim in German means summer home. In the spring of 1900, the property came under control of a newly formed association, who called themselves the Erie Yacht Club. The hotel was converted into a clubhouse, and that summer, the Yacht Club opened, and was known as Station No. 1 at Tracy Point. The Yacht Club was an instant success, but the celebration wouldn't last long. In the winter of 1902, the Tracy Point Hotel burns to the ground. The Yacht Club is forced to relocate. By this time, the trolleys were operating in Erie, and the pleasure seekers were moving further west, towards Waldemere. Because of this, much of the boat traffic around Tracy Point, disappeared. Especially, with the closing of the Massasauga Hotel, next door. The property, known as Tracy Point, then became the private summer residence of Mr. E. Germer. Germer, lived at the property for several years before it was acquired to be used as a water pumping station, in the late 1920s. The Summerheim pumping station was an engineering marvel, even by today's standards. The facility consisted of a state-of-the-art water treatment plant on the hill, along with a pump house down on the shore. The water is fed into the pump house by a large pipe that runs under the bay and out into the lake. Today, the Summerheim facility supplies much of the water for Erie. You've been watching Tracy Point on Project Algerine.